on my way back to Brunswick, uh, the second leg of a round trip to Ontario. This is generally where I say I've gone further to get less, which is for sure. But uh, if I was just driving Chicago Hall tonight, it would have been a healthy little, healthy little uh, $70 driving check tonight. Um, but you know, tonight was very telling, very, very telling night. So I get there to jog, uh, Chicago, he looks great. You know, Cindy's got him looking good. He's very quiet. I'm going to jog him. He was pretty good. He's a little shaky behind him. What I noticed the other day was he, he appeared to be taking a little more weight right hind. Now, when you go look at trotters, a lot of the times they don't land square on those hind feet, especially when they're taking weight, they'll duck one of them in and you'll see them land heavier on the outside of that hind shoe. You'll see them wear the hind shoe off quicker. Also, if you're horse people, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you'll see them wear the, wear the shoe out uh, quite a bit up front. Now, up front, when I picked the shoes up, his inside of the shoes were worn a little bit more, which is indicative of, of um, you know, their knees bothering them. Plus, he's a little pigeon-toed anyway, so it's not that shocking. I'm of the belief that his front feet are bothering him a little bit. I'll tell you why. Uh, so a, a number of things happen. We warm up. I warm him up his mile. I go a mile with him, which we haven't done lately. He seems good. He finishes up strong. But a little rickety getting into gear. I had to tighten his hobbles up a little bit tonight. Which, obviously, you don't want to see. You don't want to have to tighten hobbles up on a, on a two-year-old trotter, right? In the middle of the season. You'd hope to start letting them out. James had had them let out a little bit, a couple of holes, and he looked good, but he just looked uncomfortable last week when Chris Christopher drove him. And I don't believe it was Chris Christopher's fault at all. I think there was a lot going on. When I went home and trained him, he seemed good. But again, you have it in your head, right? Knees, for sure, bother him. Front splints, those splints bother him. But you have to ask yourself, more times than not, when knees are bothering a horse, especially a trotter, it's either coming from their feet or it's definitely um, leading to their feet. Feet and knees generally feed off one another. And then when I look at him last week, I had said to Dominic, you know, you're gonna have to scurf those stifles up. He seems a little weak in his stifles, a little tight over his back. So uh, all these are indications of him loading weight behind. And we just believe that it's his knees. And they do bother him. But I don't think it's the only thing that bothers him. I think his feet hurt him when he's a little bit pigeon-toed. You see this with Rosa and AJ. Rosa and AJ has to wear, um, Rosa and AJ has to wear uh, window bars up front. Remember I told you about the bars that go across and it, it takes the weight off the outside corner of the feet. Well, they land harder. Pigeon-toed horses land harder on the outside of their feet. You don't put those window bars on Rosa and AJ and you might get four or five days in and he's gonna start grabbing that right line real hard. And he's gonna get twisted around. He's gonna lay up on top of it. We saw that this year. We put those window bars on him for the open house and then we took them off. He had a quarter crack develop. And then we took the window bars off. But five days later, Jason said, the horse trained good, but geez, he's on that line hard. Went from a head pull to a roller bar, laying on the roller bar. I said, what about that, that foot? He said, well, it's the other foot that hit the quarter crack. I said, yeah, I know. How do you think he got there? He's taking weight. So we put the testers on his feet. Sure enough, the corners of the outside corners of his feet were quite sore. It's not really that shocking, right? And I'm not saying that that this is a. Uh, I'm not saying that this is a, a flashpoint on the horse. This isn't what's making his knee sore, his hind end sore. And muscle masses notoriously have sore knees to begin with. But if you're going to start loading weight from those knees, the first place is hind end, and their feet start bothering them a little bit. Qualified good. He had just taken the flip flops off him. He qualified good. And then he raced poorly, but he bled, right? He had another issue. He's bleeding. We were working to get that under control. Put him on Lasex. Raced him his first start. James Drogon was pretty good. Raced him a second start, he was really good. Blind switch, running all over, all over everyone. Maybe that was the third start. Fourth, he was good. And Chris Christopher drove him. He made a break, but he was clearly angry and uncomfortable when he did it. 
he wasn't angry tonight. He did his work best he could, but he really fizzled out at the end of it. I would love to verify that he bled or not, but can't do that. No vet there. Big sign. No scoping for two weeks. Can't find somebody to fill in the scope. One of the biggest racetracks in North America, and we have nobody to scope for us. He certainly felt like he bled a little bit, but he hasn't been bleeding. It's been under control. It's been good. And we don't know how to verify it. So we're going to treat him like he did. Put him on sulfamethoxazole, mild antibiotic. And I'm going to turn him out for four days. We're going to test his feet when he comes back in. We're going to strip him down a little bit before his next stake race. We're not going to train him hard. We're not going to train him hard at all. We're going to work on his knees, work on his hind end, work on his feet. First thing we're going to do, though, he just feels like he's in a funk. Maybe he's not good enough. What is this person doing? Maybe he's not good enough. But I don't think that's it. For a horse to try to 55 come 28 seconds, he has regressed a little bit. I find it highly unlikely that he would be burnt out or tired. But he might be down in the dumps a little bit. If you have a number of things bothering you and you've got to work hard, eventually you're just going to take a couple of logs off the fire when you're at work, right? Maybe not put in that 105%. And I think that's where we're at with uh, with this guy. So we'll turn him out for four days. Get him out in the grass. Let him relax and be a horse again. Bring him back in. Let's take a closer look at those feet. Maybe put window bars on him if he needs them. I'm not saying he does. But I know when you're looking at a horse, when you're looking at their feet and their veins on the side of their feet, or pulse, 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 right? What I noticed was the left one was pulsing quite a bit more than the right one. He's on the left line with the straightaways. He's definitely loading weight behind. You can see him doing it. And then whether this had a, whether this mattered or not, maybe he's left-handed or not, I don't know. But he was pawing quite a bit after the race. It was only with that left one, right? A lot of horses do that. But all these little tiny things lead me to believe that maybe that left front's bothering him a little bit. And it hasn't been his knee. It's always his right one. Which, again, his right knee and his right split bother him. He's going to load weight where? Left front. I'm saying his left front foot's a little sore. All this stuff when you talk it through it makes sense. And all these little things accumulate and can really compound to be bigger things. And then usually the horses will reach a tipping point where like, oh, I just just need some time off. Just leave me alone. And that's what he felt like tonight. A little flat. A little dull. And I'm glad I came here tonight. Because I wanted to know why he made a break the other day. I want to know what's going on with him. And you don't see any of this stuff until he is at top speed. It was hard for Chris to give any feedback last week because he was running. He was on the run. He was clearly angry about something last week. I didn't see that tonight. So we couldn't get feedback from last week at racing speed. I didn't see anything really out of the ordinary when I trained him this week, so it's certainly nobody's fault in the burn. If I'm coming there to look for stuff and I can't see it, can't really blame them for not seeing it. But at top speed, I can see stuff tonight. So he's out in the field for four days, just still four days to relax. I do plan on racing him in the next goal again. We are gonna treat him as if he bled a little bit tonight, even though I don't know if he did. And that's just with a mild antibiotic. Let him eat some grass, let him eat some feed, let him be a horse, bring him back in. Investigate those front feet really close. Do a total diagnostic of the horse. And, uh, and get him ready for September the 6th. Looks like, what, 12 days from now? 11 days from now? Probably train him a little bit five days out. I don't think... Um, I don't think he's the type of horse that needs to be drilled into, right? Especially right now. What we want to do is maybe get him a soft spot and get the right guy for it. Hopefully James can drive his next start. You know, James said he's just so goddamn hot. Excuse my language. I said he wasn't hot to me. I could have dropped him in the three hole. He was perfect. He just felt like he was not on the top of his game tonight. And I think a lot goes into that. All those tiny little components that I just talked about 
It doesn't have to be one of them. It can be all of them. He's a big, giant, heavy two-year-old trotter. His knees start to hurt him, or are hurting him. Well, that's going to manifest in other ways. Front feet, if his right knee and his right split bother him, and that's what we are treating, it's not hard to believe that his left front would start to bother him a little bit more as he starts to take more weight on that left side. I believe his left front foot is bothering him a little bit. We can manage all this stuff, but we have to manage all of it. We can't just manage a little bit. So that's where we're at with uh, with Chicago Hall. Jeez, 10 minutes talking about Chicago Hall. Well, I don't need to talk much about Dominion. He raced very Dominion-like, and he'll be in the sale on Monday. That's about that. I thought he was third. I thought he should have been second. Instead, he was fourth. Just be raced adequately and okay, but par for the course for this guy. No surprises there. Prince Charmer, a winner. I told Luke the other night, I said, you know, can't blast him into the turn. Just let him alone. You don't have to baby him either. You don't have to double him up and help him through the turns. Just let the hobbles work. He looks for them. He understands how to use them. You go into the turn and just let him trot into it. You'll see him square himself up, snug the hobbles up, blast through it. But if you go into the turn and you try and drive him and coddle him like, like an old school horseman, he's going to run. That's just how he is. Guaranteed. Luke floated over to the front. They have hit the gas down a little hard coming to the half. And it did help that the favorite run getting into the last turn. But hey, we'll take it. It's a win. Prince Charmer, victorious. Our first winner in two days. Uh, so Prince Charmer was a winner tonight. Very, very happy. I love to see this horse win. He's just such a nice horse to be around. So not disappointed with Chicago Hall and not at all disappointed with driving over here. It was an extremely telling day. I got to see a lot from sitting behind Chicago Hall. I don't believe that he's tired. I think he's a little worn out. He has a lot of little things bothering him, and we have to address them all before his next start. I think his flashpoint right now is knees bother him. We can manage those. But I think that left front foot needs to be investigated moving forward. I think it's a little bit of a flashpoint right now. I felt it. I saw it. And he's loading a lot of weight in a lot of different places. And put it this way, for trotters especially, the more fluid they get, the faster they go. Yeah, I know that sounds logical and reasonable, but it's harder to do than it looks. So the more little things we can take off the board, more little things we can check off, feet check, knees check, splints check, take care of that back, check, it will result in a good purse check. How's that? So a nice horse with some issues we got to work on. Uh, I think we have a pretty good handle on what they're going to be. Uh, I didn't get to see Dominic tonight. He's away racing his horse in Cleveland Mosh and come back tomorrow. But I will uh, reach out to him and, and tell him what I saw and what I thought. And I'm sure we will uh, devise a plan of attack. But I think step one, get him out in the grass, give him three or four days off, and just let him be a horse. So with that, I'll continue on my way. It says I'm going to be home by 1245. But every time I go through the border, when I use my Nexus, I think it must add time because it, it just drops 10 minutes every time I go through. I'll be home half past 12 in the morning. And then uh, no need to hurry to Kentucky tomorrow. I don't start till race 10 and they race in the evening. So lots of time for tomorrow. Anyway, I will talk to all of you very soon. I hope you had a good night. It wasn't a horrible night. We get checks all around. We get a win, a fourth and a fifth. Not too shabby. Take care. Talk to you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend.